watch out caravan brands, one of the best in camper trailers is coming for you. Now Cub is known for reliability, quality and a focus on Australian made products. They have a legion of followers from their over 50 years of manufacturing excellence. So let's start there. As mentioned, Cub has a reputation of building some of the best camper trailers around. They've won Camper Trailer of the Year for our sister brand, you'll see a link in the description, and they constantly impress in testing. Three generations of the Fagan family have run the company for over 50 years, with Shane the current MD supported by Amy his wife, and they employ around 100 staff. Based out of North Rocks, west of Sydney, Cub has perfected the forward fold and hard floor camper, and now they've turned their eyes to caravans with the C16. Cub always focuses on using locally sourced parts for their campers and that carries over to the C16. All steel is blue scope and the power systems are from South Australia and Red Arc and even the mattress is locally made in Melbourne by Slumber Rest. All Cub trailers proudly wear the Australian made logo. We're shooting in Turon Gates, about two and a half hours west of Sydney. We chose to come here for a few reasons. It gave us a good amount of highway towing as well as some steep climbs and dirt tracks to test the cub. Once running thousands of head of cattle, Turon Gates still has some livestock but also offers remote camping, glamping and cabin accommodation. We didn't see one during our shoot, but believe me when I say it has one of the best sunsets near Sydney. It's a wonderful spot I'd recommend to anyone heading west from our New South Wales capital. The body of the C16 is wood free, which means there is no chance of rot. Now the walls and the roof and the floor are all 30mm composite with an aluminium skin. Now why I like that construction method is it has few holes and no seams across the roof and down the sides, which means a lot less chance of water ingress. Now on the front is a DO35 coupling, you can option on a ball coupling. And a detail you can't see but comes standard on the C16 is Elko's tow assist, the first safety system to combine ESC and sway control. Now we've reviewed it, if you want to read about it, you'll find a link below. Underneath the C16 is exactly as I expected from Cub. Poly tanks, which are obviously bash proof, no exposed wiring or exposed plumbing to worry about. Now the chassis is a 150 by 50 by 3 mil and all blue scope steel Australian made. Interestingly, it rides on Alco Enduro X suspension, which is a clamshell design trailing arm suspension with twin shocks. It's pretty unique and hardly seen in Australia. The C16 gets its name from its internal length 16 foot or about 4.8 meters. The ceiling height is a touch under 2 meters and its internal width a touch over 2 meters. Now the mattress is made to fit, it's a quality pillow top. And to let in views like we've got you need oversized windows which just adds such a sense of airiness and space inside this caravan. Now I'll get out of the way so you can have a better look. Even though it's only 16 foot long inside, it packs a lot in. There's a massive ensuite with separate toilet, a 23 litre microwave, soft closed pantry, and excellent stainless steel benches. There are a lot of creature comforts, like a smart TV, fusion stereo, of course there's air conditioning, and there's even a Wi-Fi system. The fridge is a Dometic CRX 110 litre compressor, so it has fewer vents than a gas powered fridge, that can sometimes let dust in. If you think the fridge is a bit small, relax, there is room for one outside too. A 2.6 meter manual awning protects the kitchen. Now this is the only cooking in the C16. It uses a Dometic three burner stove and it's plumbed for hot and cold water. Now, the Red Arc TVMS, or Total Vehicle Management System display, is tucked in just here so you can keep an eye on your water tanks. A couple of Fusion speakers will keep the party going. And here you can fit up to a 95 litre CFX Dometic fridge. So you could total 205 or 210 litres of fridge storage with ease. 
The hot water system is a Truma Combi D6. I am seeing these pop up everywhere and for good reason. They heat water fast but also double as a space heater for cold nights. The power system is by RedArc and it's pretty comprehensive. For 12 volt charging from the 720 watts of solar or Anderson plug is a BC-DC40 which can pump as much as 40 amps into the two 200 amp hour batteries. A Manager 30 converts AC to DC at up to 30 amps, meaning combined the chargers can push in as much as 70 amps into the batteries. But that's not all. There is also a RedArc Red Vision Total Vehicle Management System, or TVMS, that monitors the incoming power, prioritizing solar, and distributing power to appliances as you charge. Red Vision isn't just the brains behind your charging, it is also how you monitor how much water you have, the temperature inside your fridge, and even the temperature inside the van. Now you can do it either via an app or the display on the van. We picked up a new Ranger Sport V6 for the Cub C16 review. It's a press car on loan from Ford, so we need to say thanks. In short, it's a big step up on the old one. The new V6 feels smooth and there are oodles of torque and power. So towing the Cub C16, it's pretty effortless. It's a single axle, so it's pretty easy to maneuver. We think the weight we're sitting at right now is probably about 2100 kilos, and we estimate the ball weight is probably about 170. And that's just because we've added a bit of water and some jerry cans to the front, a little bit of gear in the front, and a bit of water in the main tanks. So it's not a light proposition, but behind something like the Ranger, it's fine. Um, so towing with something like the Ranger, it's a very good choice. I think you'd get away with any modern day double cab ute. Fuel consumption wise, we saw around about 16 litres per 100 on the freeway, which I thought was actually a little high, but perhaps it's just this Ranger's got a bit of power and I might have been a bit towy. Um, out in the dirt, we're averaging actually closer to 19, which is probably about right, because we've been pushing it a lot up through the hills. But it feels good. It feels balanced. I haven't felt like the braking or stability has been an issue, and I've never felt ESC kick in. So, yeah, the Cub 16 tows really well. I came to Sydney expecting a lot from Cub and the new C16. I knew the quality of the build was going to be exceptional. I knew the fit and finish was going to be fantastic. What I didn't expect and I didn't see coming was just how luxurious this caravan is. Now it is a fairly sizable investment, but knowing how Cub backs its products and how loyal its fan base is, I expect every owner of the C16 to love their caravan.